A younger, less world-weary 8-bit music theory would often spend his time transcribing video game tracks and analyzing the harmony. Ah, a minor 4 to 1! That's an example of primary mode mixture! What a great cadence! He'd say. Once in a while, he'd come across a progression that seemed rather strange. Ah, yes! An A minor to C minor to E flat minor! That's... Well, that's, uh, what, what is that? Try as he might, our young, nerdy friend could not for the life of him figure out what these progressions were supposed to be. Where are all the dominants? He'd cry. Where is this going? What key are we even in? Some progressions would drive him to tears every single night. How does this even function? That's the thing. It doesn't. Or it didn't, but it still does. Look, today I want to talk about non-functional harmony, and the perfect game soundtrack to use as an example is from one of the best video games of all time, Chrono Trigger for the Super Nintendo. So, what is non-functional harmony? Well, it's when a chord progression doesn't follow the laws of functional harmony. So, what is functional harmony? The term functional harmony describes music that exists in a key and has chords that have specific functions. Oh, very helpful, I know. Look, a chord's function describes where that chord feels like it wants to go next. Generally speaking, chords fall into three main groups. Either they feel totally stable and don't want to move anywhere, they feel unstable and want to move to another chord, or they set up an unstable chord, neither feeling particularly tense or particularly resolved. When you talk about tonic, dominant, and predominant chords, you're referring to the chord's function. Functional harmony generally keeps going through the cycle of setting up tension, creating tension, and releasing that tension. Now, within this broad system, there's basically an unlimited amount of room for experimentation, but that's what functional harmony actually entails. Any music that doesn't fit into the system of tension and resolution can be considered non-functional. Here, for example, let's look at Chrono Trigger's Secret of the Forest. The majority of the song happens over this two chord vamp, G flat major 13 sharp 11 to F minor 9. At first glance, this seems functional because G flat and F minor are both found in the key of D flat major being the 4 and 3 chords respectively. The melody over the G-flat major even emphasizes the sharp 11 scale degree, giving us a Lydian sound that just screams 4 chord. Over the F minor chord, however, the 9th G natural is not found in the key of D-flat, and this extension is inescapable. It's in every beat of the accompaniment, and the melody is completely focused on it. So what, you might ask? Functional music almost never stays entirely in one key, so what makes this song different? Well, here's where we get a little bit more abstract. The chords don't lead us from one place to the next. The G flat chord doesn't push to resolve down to the F minor, and the F minor doesn't pull back up towards the G flat, but together they create this impressionistic color that you can just immerse yourself in. They don't act like chords so much as two contrasting scales, with almost every note in each scale appearing in the chord's extensions, and the contrasting G-flat, G-natural relationship deliberately pushed to the forefront of the music. Neither chord feels entirely resolved to, and this creates an ethereal, floaty feeling which is perfect for setting the atmosphere of an ancient forest. Here's another example, a strange happening. Again, we get a two chord vamp, this time alternating between D minor 7 and A flat minor 6. Notice how the number of contrasting notes between the two chords directly affects how creepy the progression feels, where Secret of the Forest's one note contrast gave the music a floaty, mystical feeling, a strange happening's three note contrast feels downright unsettling. The tritone relationship between the two chords' roots doesn't hurt this vibe either. You'll find a lot of non-functional chord progressions center around only two chords. This is partially because two chords is enough to create a variety of different atmospheres, and partially because throwing a lot of different chords at the listener with no discernible function to guide them through can make it hard to follow and frustrating to listen to. This is why jazz fusion will never be mainstream again.
But any two chords, no matter how out there they sound together, can become normalized to anybody, no matter how musically uneducated, with enough repetition. That's not to say you won't find any complete onslaughts of non-functional harmony in this soundtrack. Yasunori Mitsuda, the composer for Chrono Trigger, loves to use parallel minor 7th chords to create dissonance, like in Boss Battle Theme 2. At first, it seems a little all over the place, but having the chords follow a very clear descent by semitone pattern helps anchor the listener a little bit. This descending minor chord idea is actually used quite a bit throughout the soundtrack, like in Undersea Palace's B section. It's still a non-functional progression, of course. Try and think of what chord could come next after either of these sections that would sound resolved. In functional harmony, this is usually very easy to do. Even if a song never actually lets us hear the tonic, it's almost always easy enough to hear in our mind what the tonic would be. In non-functional harmony, this isn't really the case. Notice also the way that the minor chords jump up by minor thirds in the first bar. This is another very common chordal relationship in the Chrono Trigger soundtrack. For example, check out the B section to Black Omen. This is cool and all, but the really impressive thing about the soundtrack is the way Mitsuda mixes the functional with the non-functional. The game's title track is the perfect example of this. Take a look at this opening progression. If you take a bird's eye view of the harmony, it's easy enough to dismiss that minor 6 chord. It's weird, sure, but it's just chromatically approaching the flat 6-5 cadence, which is very normal, even if the 5 chord is usually a dominant. When listening to it though, these chords move very slowly, and if you don't know where the piece is going to end up, the first two chords will definitely disorient you. It's such a genius composition. We get this bold, impressionistic color with the A minor to F sharp minor, then the chromatic move down to F disorients us even further before the E minor sets our feet back on the ground again. With the E minor moving to the A minor for the A section, we're more aware of what's going on, and we're clearly in the key of A minor. Now when we hear that F sharp minor, we'll know to expect a descent down to F next. So what does Mitsuda do? He repeats the A minor F sharp minor move, playing with our expectations. Playing with the listener's expectations is one of the key components of writing functional harmony, and it's what makes a lot of music so fun to listen to. But in isolation, an A minor to F sharp minor to A minor would not be considered functional in any sense. So Mitsuda is creating harmony that functions, but out of non-functional parts. Another great example of this is in the B section to Wings That Cross Time. Again, from a bird's eye view, it looks like an easy write-off as a chromatic approach to a normal cadence, but the amount of time we sit on each chord and the deliberate accenting of the cross relations between our F minor and B Lydian scales definitely gives this progression a touch of non-functional color. Compare and contrast this move to some of our previous examples. Like A Strange Happening, these two chords are a tritone apart, which sounds a little jarring. But the mere two note contrast between these two chords, or rather the scales that these chords are based on, makes the transition smoother, more like what we saw in Secret of the Forest. A lot of the time in progressions like these, the melody will specifically target common tones found between the two chords to even out the sound. This is where pentatonic scales can come in extremely useful, as they're already a powerful melodic tool in one key, but the limited number of notes allows one to fit into multiple contrasting keys or modes. Let's take our first example, Secret of the Forest. Compare the two chords. 
The first, as we've already discussed, is based off of the G-flat Lydian scale, and the second is based off of the F minor scale. Now let's take out the notes that don't fit into both scales, in this case the G-flat and G natural. Now we never actually hear a D or D-flat over an F minor chord in this tune, so let's take that out too. What we're left with is an A-flat pentatonic scale. Writing a melody using the scale would likely result in a great singable melody that seamlessly smooths over the transition from one tonality to the next. Great! Except, Mitsuda deliberately doesn't do this. In fact, the majority of his melodies in the soundtrack emphasize the contrast between his non-functional chords by accenting the notes that don't fit nicely into both parent scales. This really makes the harmony stand out, and it definitely gives the soundtrack a unique flavor, but it can sound a little jarring at times, so it's not something I would always recommend doing. For Chrono Trigger though, it definitely works, and it's a powerful mood setting tool. Well, that's the video. Thanks for watching! If you have any questions about non functional harmony or anything else, please feel free to leave a comment below or tweet me at 8 Bit Music Theory. Special thanks to my gracious and patient patrons for supporting me in this endeavor and thank you to everyone who's been liking and sharing and subscribing to my videos so far. It's really amazing to read all the ridiculously nice comments you guys leave and it really inspires me to make the best videos I can make so I just wanted to say thanks. Anyway thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.